Most people who travel in the West are familiar with the Moab, Utah area. It is nestled on the Colorado River in close proximity to Arches National Park and Canyonlands National Park. It's these two national parks that receive the lion's share of attention from visitors. For instance, we recently visited Arches National Park early on a Sunday morning during late March. As you can see, even in the off season, you can wait in line to get into the park, sometimes for long periods of time. One of the easily overlooked jewels in the area though, is not nearly so crowded. Dead Horse Point is a Utah State Park, and it is well worth visiting if you ever find yourself in the Moab area. The main highway from the north into the Moab area is US Highway 191. About nine miles north of Moab is a turnoff onto State Route 313, which takes you to the north entrance of Canyonlands National Park. It also takes you to Dead Horse Point State Park. The highway twists and turns for about 23 miles before you reach the park. There is plenty to draw your attention and make you say wow as you feel like you are driving through a postcard. Before you know it, you'll reach the turnoff to Dead Horse Point. It is important to understand that in the 32 miles between Moab and Dead Horse Point State Park, you won't find any gas stations or stores. As long as you are prepared though, you'll enjoy your visit. The park covers just over 5,300 acres of high desert mesa. Once you enter the park, the main road is only 3.4 miles long, ending in the parking area at the Overlook. The road takes you past camping areas, four rent yurts, and a visitor center. The main attraction, however, is the Overlook itself. We uh, came here early in the morning. It's about oh, eight o'clock in the morning. And um, it's absolutely gorgeous around here as we walk out to this point. We'll be able to see a little bit more as we get up here, but basically Dead Horse Point State Park is a Utah State Park that overlooks the Canyonlands National Park. And so you get an overview from this area uh, into the Canyonlands National Park itself. And we'll see as a vista opens up here. Got a little shelter that we're going under. I'm sure that this is an interpretive center area where different programs can be can be done. You can see the uh, the overlook into Canyonlands National Park, and you can actually see the Colorado River down there, which has carved all of this over the eons. a uh, stunning view here in the Canyonlands. We'll go up just a little bit further here in the overlook. This overlook is on top of one of these mesas, on top of one of these buttes, and it is <laughs> quite high up on top of one of these. So.
Well, I don't know what I can say to add to this view. This is beautiful. Beautiful area. It's hard to describe the different colors uh, that you can see here. And I have no doubt that as the uh, sun progresses overhead and at different times of the year, you can pick out different colors as they are highlighted. A lot of people overlook, uh, overlook Dead Horse Point State Park. They uh, come to see the national parks here, to see canyon lands and to see arches and to uh, experience Moab, but they often just drive right by Dead Horse Point State Park and don't take the time to, uh, to go in and they miss a, uh, a gorgeous view to be sure. Dead Horse Point State Park was created in 1959 and predates the national park it overlooks. According to one legend, the park and the geological point within the park derive their name from cowboys who would herd wild mustangs onto the point and close them in with a temporary fence of pinyon pine and juniper branches. This allowed them to corral the herd and cull off the horses that they wanted. The rest they would leave to eventually die giving the point its memorable name. It is interesting to note that several movies have been filmed in the park, such as Con Air, John Carter, and Mission Impossible 2. The most notable movie, however, was 1991's Thelma and Louise. What are you talking about? The dramatic ending where the duo drive their 1966 Thunderbird into the Grand Canyon was filmed very near the park. The point that is the highlight of the park is approximately 2,000 feet above the Colorado River. The isolated vantage point and desolate area can easily make you think that you are alone in the world. It's hard to give a sense of just how small you can feel in, uh, in an area like this. I mean, this, this is absolutely, <laughs> absolutely breathtaking. Canyonlands is a beautiful area anyway, but uh, overlooking here at Dead Horse Point State Park is a uh, view that you don't get every day. This is just gorgeous. Beautiful. And there's no uh, big crowds. If you plan on visiting Canyonlands National Park, and especially if you plan on hiking in the park, you'll find a visit to Dead Horse Point State Park to be worthwhile because it gives you an overlook of Canyonlands. Plus, Dead Horse Point gives you something that you cannot easily get anywhere else, which is an unobstructed view of the Colorado River as it winds through the canyons below you. I would strongly suggest that if you uh, come to the Moab area and you put Arches National Park and Canyonlands National Park on your itinerary, that you make some time to come to Dead Horse Point State Park. It is magnificent in the views that you can see. And the uh, little hikes that are here, they are that. They're just little, and so they're, they're uh, short. You can take them. It's a, a fairly well-developed area. Uh, having been to the north rim of the Grand Canyon, I would say that it's uh, comparable to that in uh, difficulty on these trails. It'll cost you a little bit of money to get in. Not a lot, about 20 bucks to uh, get in. At least that's what it cost us this morning and uh, well worth it. This, this view is, uh, is wonderful. I enjoyed my visit to Dead Horse Point State Park and I enjoyed sharing it with you. 
If you have any comments or questions, I invite you to leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for traveling with me today.